Once when he was speaking to Ramananda Rai, Lord Chaitanya praised Sanatana Goswami's humility, renunciation and learning. Haribol! Lord Chaitanya taught four principles through four devotees. Through Sanatana Goswami, he taught the meekness and humility of a devotee. Through Haridas, he taught forbearance. Through Ramananda Rai, he taught, he taught how a devotee can vanquish the power of Cupid and completely overcome sexual attraction. Through Dhanada Pandit, he taught objective criticism. criticism. Sanatana Goswami established the first temple in Vrindavan, Radha Mohan. That's the temple in the modern age. After which many, many other temples have been established. When Lord Chaitanya was, after he finished instructing Sanatan at Paranasi, he prepared to go to Puri and he told Sanatan to go to Vrindavan. He told Sanatan that my devotees in Vrindavan are mostly very poor. They mostly only have one, each one tanta and a small water pot. So when you go there, you please look after them. It's a very great responsibility that Lord Chaitanya gave to Sanatan Goswami to look after all the devotees. His devotees in Vrindavan. When Sanatan reached Vrindavan, he met Subhuti Rai, who who he knew, they had known each other previously from their secular lives. Um, Subhuti Rai had previously met Rupa Goswami there. Uh, Rupa Goswami, um, Subhuti showed much affection to Sanatana Goswami, but Sanatana Goswami was a little uh, careful not to accept such relationship because he didn't want to relate to him in, in the mundane way according to the previous relationship. Sanatan was very renounced. He would travel from forest to forest in the Vrindavan area and he would stay under a different tree or in, in different bushes. Uh, he would just stay in, in the trees and bushes. He collected the book known as Mathura Mahatmya, an ancient scripture which describes the place of the Mathura area. And following the descriptions in that, uh, he traveled throughout the forest of Vrindavan, finding out the lost holy places. After some time in Vrindavan, Sanatan set out for Puri to meet Lord Jagannath. He came on the path through the Jarikanda forest from uh, from Varanasi to Puri. And there, because of drinking bad water and hardly eating, sometimes fasting, sometimes chewing little food, he contracted a, a serious skin disease by which his whole body was covered with weeping sores. So he felt very disappointed, thinking that when I go to Puri, I won't be able to enter the temple of Jagannath because I'm fallen, according to the Hindu social system. He was ostracized for having served the Muslims. And I also won't be able to see Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu very often because he lives close to the temple. I can't go even close to the temple because if I touch the servants of Lord Jagannath, the priests of the Lord, will frequent that area, then they'll be contaminated and I'll commit a fence like that. So I won't be able to see Lord Jagannath very often. Uh, I won't be able to see Lord Chaitanya very often. I won't be able to see Lord Jagannath, except at the Rathiyatra festival. And now I've got all the, these sores all over my body. I'm sick and I can't serve properly due to infirmity of the body. Therefore, he thought that, that this body is completely useless. It's just an obstacle for my devotional service. Better I give it up by uh, falling before the chariot of Lord Jagannath at the Rathiyatra. And in this way, by giving up my life at an auspicious time, in an auspicious place, 
under the all auspicious glance of Lord Chaitanya, I may get a better chance in my next life to serve Krishna. So Sanatana Goswami, when he came to Puri, by asking, he found the residents of Haridash Thakur, who immediately, even though they had never met, Haridash immediately recognized him and embraced him. Sanatana expressed his eagerness to meet Lord Chaitanya. Haridash said that Lord Chaitanya will be coming just at this time. He comes every day, which he did. He came shortly after that. Haridas Kwakatis prostrated obeisances along with Sanatan. So Lord Chaitanya picked up Haridas and embraced him. And Haridas pointed out, here is Sanatan, at which Lord Chaitanya was very surprised because he hadn't expected, he didn't have any news that Sanatan Goswami was coming. So he also went to embrace Sanatan Goswami, but Sanatan ran backwards saying that, no, please don't touch me, I'm very fallen. I'm from a very low background. And on top of that, I have these nasty weeping sores from which all horrible uh, smelling liquid is coming, infectious liquid. But Lord Chaitanya embraced him by force anyway. And Lord Sanatana said, you'll be, you'll be, I don't want to make the offense of having my contaminated body touch you, but Lord Chaitanya said that you are not contaminated by your touch, you can purify the whole world. So uh, Lord Chaitanya told Sanatana to remain in the same cottage with Haridas and he used to come and see them both every day along with his devotees and discuss so many topics of Krishna. But one day, unexpectedly, Lord Chaitanya suddenly said to Sanatana Goswami that uh, you are thinking to give up your body and in this way attain Krishna but it's not possible to attain Krishna by such a means. Krishna can only be attained by the process of devotional service. Lord Chaitanya gave so many examples from scripture to prove this. Lord Chaitanya said that if I could, simply by giving up my body, I could attain Krishna, I would be ready to give up millions of bodies at every second. But that is not the way to attain Krishna. And that is simply uh, an activity of the mode of ignorance committing suicide. So Sanatan was astonished that Lord Chaitanya, he knows my mind, he knows that I was planning this. So Lord Chaitanya then chastised Sanatan more, saying that uh, you already surrendered your body to me, it's already my property, so how is it that you now want to destroy it? What kind of religious principles are you following? Uh, I have many things to, to do through your body, I, I have much work to do in Vrindavan, but I can't reside there because I promised my mother I would stay here, so I want to do that through you. I want that devotional service should be preached in Vrindavan. I want that the holy places should be excavated. I want books on devotional service written. I want you to demonstrate through your personal behavior how devotees should live in Vrindavan, especially uh, devotees in their, in their announced order of life, how they should live. All these things I have to accomplish through you but you simply want to commit suicide. What is this? You can't do that. So, when, after this meeting, when, uh, and then after this, Sanatana expressed his sorrow, saying that I can't serve you properly. Uh, every time you meet me, you embrace me, but I, it's an I'm making an offense because my body is covered with sores. Then Lord Chaitanya again offended, uh, embraced him, and at that time all these sores immediately went away, and his body was restored to a beautiful golden color, which reminded Haridas and, uh, and Sanatana of the previous pastime of Lord Chaitanya, which was very famous of embracing the leper Vasudev and restoring his body to its beauty. So after Lord Chaitanya left that time, Haridas praised Sanatana said that you are so fortunate that Lord Chaitanya wants to perform so many different services through you. Once in the hottest part of the year, Lord Chaitanya was invited to take prasad at a place in Puri, Yameshva, which could only be reached uh, by by going along the beach or going past the Jagannath temple. While taking prasad, Lord Chaitanya 
sent a message that Sanatan should immediately come to join him there. Which Sanatan, being very happy that he was called by the Lord, immediately went along the beach, which was uh, at that time of year, in the middle of the day, would be extremely hot. And actually Sanatan's feet blistered from the heat, but he didn't even notice it. He was so happy that he was going to see Lord Chaitanya. When Sanatan arrived, Lord Chaitanya had already finished his lunch and was resting. When the Lord woke up, he saw Sanatan and asked, How did you come here? Which path did you take? Sanatan said, I came along the beach. So Lord Chaitanya said, Why didn't you go on the path by the temple? That's very cool and shady. You must have... How could you go along the path along the beach? You know, your feet must have burned. And actually it was a fact that Sanatan couldn't walk because of the blisters, but he said, I, at the time I didn't even notice it. I was so, I, I, I couldn't go the, by the temple. I, I have a vow never to go by the temple because I don't want to be an offender by touching the servants of Lord Jagannath. So Lord Chaitanya was testing uh, Sanatan Goswami in this way. And he was very pleased at that he had passed the test. And Haridas and Sanatan, always um, wanting to maintain their position as very fallen and low, they sat below the rest of the devotees. So as is natural, when people meet after some time, they ask about their affairs, each other's affairs. So Lord Chaitanya asked Sanatan, how are you? How is everything? Sanatan replied, everything is auspicious because I have had darshan of your lotus feet. So they were, they exchanged news of the different devotees they, they knew and had met in uh, Puri and Mathura respectively. Even and Lord Chaitanya told Sanatan, who didn't know about this before, that his brother Anupam had passed away from this world. So um, Lord Chaitanya said it's very, to Sanatan, it's very good that you've come here. Now you just stay in this place with Haridas. Both of you are leaders in understanding the mellows of pure devotional service. So just go on tasting the nectar of Krishna consciousness and taking the name of Krishna. So this way Sanatan stayed in Puri and every day Lord Chaitanya would go to meet them and discuss topics of Krishna with them for some time. Lord Chaitanya would personally bring the highest quality prasad to Haridas and Sanatan. Now one day, uh, Lord Chaitanya started speaking something to, without any previous indication, he started speaking something to Sanatan. He told him that if by giving up my body I could attain Krishna, then I would be ready even in a moment to give up millions of bodies. By suicide, you can't get Krishna. You can get him by performing devotional service. There's no way to get Krishna without serving him. Activities like committing suicide is just in the mode of ignorance. How can you attain to Krishna by activities in the mode of ignorance? There's no chance of developing love for God without performing devotional service. And to prove this, Lord Chaitanya quoted many slokas from the Vedic scriptures. So Lord Chaitanya told Sanatan, give up all these wrong ideas and engage yourself in hearing and chanting about Krishna. In this way, you will very quickly attain to the lotus feet of Krishna. It's not, as you are thinking, Lord Chaitanya told Sanatan, that birth in a low family is a disqualification for serving Krishna. Just as it is not a qualification simply to be born in a high-class family, that is not a qualification to serve Krishna. Whoever worships Krishna is great. And whoever doesn't is a rejected, out, a rejected rascal. In the service of Krishna, there is no consideration of social position. In fact, Krishna is more merciful to the fallen because those who are born in high-class families, those who are very learned, and those who are very rich, they all tend to be puffed up. So in this way, uh, Lord Chaitanya gave important instruction to Sanatan Goswami upon hearing which Sanatan was amazed, thinking that Lord Chaitanya doesn't approve of my intention to commit suicide. See, Sanatan was just living in Puri, and without telling anybody, he was just waiting for the time of Rathyatra to come, so he could throw himself under the wheel of the cart and commit suicide. 
then he understood that Lord Chaitanya, he knows everything and he is forbidding me to do this. Although I didn't tell anybody, Lord Chaitanya knows. No. So thinking this, Sanatan <coughs> fell down at the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya and grabbed his feet, mm. saying that, uh, that what, what is the benefit in keeping me alive? I'm, I'm so useless and r- rascal. Lord Chaitanya said to Sanatan that you belong to me. You already surrendered to me and your body belongs to me. So you're, you want to destroy someone else's property? Is that very good? Don't you know how to consider what is right and what is wrong? I have many important things to do through your body. Uh, you will have to write books on Vaishnava behavior, on devotional service, love of God, and so many different things. You will have to explain how to perform devotional service. You will have to um, establish in this world how to serve Krishna in transcendental love. You will have to excavate lost holy places and teach others by your personal example, the uh, what is renunciation? Mathura and Vrindavan is my own <coughs> personal <coughs> dear abode. Dear abode. I want to do many things there uh, for preaching Krishna consciousness. Yeah. By by writing, actually later on, Sanatan Goswami, by writing different books, taught so many different things. And by mainly by his endeavor, endeavors, the lost places of pilgrimage in the Mathura Vrindavan area were rediscovered and reestablished. He established the formal temple worship and the temple of Madan Mohan, which was the first temple in the area at that time, following which so many other temples were established and still are being established. By personal example, he taught how a, devo- how a person should be in the renounced order of life by completely dedicating himself in the service of the Lord. Again, by his personal example, he taught how one should live in Vrindavan to perform devotional service. So in so many ways, uh, Sinatana Goswami developed the cult of Krishna consciousness within and the importance of Vrindavan. So Lord Chaitanya wanted to do all these things through Sanatana Goswami. Lord Chaitanya said to Sanatana that, I have to stay here in Puri because I promised my mother so. Therefore, I cannot go to live in Mathura and Vrindavan. Therefore, I wanted you to go there and do all these things on my behalf. Yes, sir. But now you just want to commit suicide and spoil all these plans. How can I tolerate this? Then Sanatana Goswami said, I offer my respectful obeisances to you. Who can understand the depth of your heart? You simply make others dance like wooden puppets according to your desire. So uh, Lord Chaitanya said to Haridas that this person here, he wants to destroy someone else's property. What do you think of that? Tell him not to do it. Then Haridas said to Lord Chaitanya that uh, we can't understand your the depths of your mind. You are so great and you have accepted Sanatana Goswami. He is so fortunate. Then when Lord Chaitanya left to perform his noon duties, Haridas addressed Sanatana after embracing him. But Haridas said that uh, it is not possible to find the limits of your good fortune. Lord Chaitanya said that to you that your body is my own personal property. Therefore, I don't think there is anyone more fortunate than you. What he cannot do with his own body, he wants you. He wants to do it through you, and he wants you to do it in Mathura of all places. <coughs> Definitely, what? Uh, but, but uh, but Sanatan, yeah. No, Haida said, "I'm not so fortunate as you. Although I was born in this sacred land of India." I couldn't serve Lord Chaitanya properly. Therefore, my life, my body, everything is useless. In reply, Sanatan said that actually you are the most fortunate person because you are one of the personal associates of Lord Chaitanya. In this way, Sanatan praised Haridas. Yeah. When the, every year, so many devotees would come from Bengal to, uh, to see Lord Chaitanya and join with him in the Rathiyatra festival at Puri. So when they came, Sadhguru Goswami introduced him to all the devotees and asked him to offer obeisances to them all. 
Lord Chaitanya introduced Sanatan to all the devotees. And Sanatan became very dear to all the devotees due to his exalted good qualities and because of his devotional learning. So, uh, respectively, according to their social status, they became merciful to him, made friends with him, or they honored him. So, um, there's one incident in the, in, in the next year, in the hot season, that Lord Chaitanya was called to take his midday prasad at one particular place. And then he called Sanatana Goswami at lunch, midday lunch, you come. So, um, Sanatana Goswami was very happy to get that order. And he came to that place by walking along the sand on the beach. Living in Murmansk, you cannot imagine what that means. Mm-hmm. Because the sand in the hot season is so hot, you can cook, you can literally cook chapatis on it. So walking on your bare feet in that, it's exactly like walking on a hot fire. Nothing, there's no difference. It's just exactly like that. But Sanatana Goswami is so happy that Lord Chaitanya had called him that he didn't even feel that his feet were burning. And all his, his feet became blistered. You know, if you, uh, something like that, not exactly boils, bl- if you put, if you put your hand, you yeah, burn something like that. Bl- blister is actually the word. I don't know how to say it. When he reached the place, Lord Chaitanya had finished his lunch and was already resting. So Govinda, Lord Chaitanya's servant, gave Lord Ch- gave Sanatan Lord Chaitanya's remnants. And after taking that, he went to see Lord Chaitanya, who by this time had got up. So Lord Chaitanya asked, Which path did you come by, Sanatan? Because he knew there were two paths. There's either one that goes past the temple or one along the beach. And he knew that Sanatan Goswami had a a rule that he would never go on the path by the temple. He also knew that it was practically impossible to go on the path by the beach at this time of day in the hot season. So when Sanatan replied that I came along the path by the beach, then Lord Chaitanya said, "Well, didn't the uh, didn't the how, how did you come through the hot sand? The path by the temple is nicely shaded and cool. So why did you come on the hot beach? Now now the soles of your feet must be all blistered and spoiled." And how will you be able to walk? No. How could you tolerate that? Sanatana so Goswami said, I, I didn't really feel very much pain. I, I didn't even know that my feet were, were getting blistered. I had to come because you called me and I couldn't go past the gate where Jagannath lives. I had to come because you called me, but I couldn't go past the path on the yes. temple. Because there were so many, uh, de- de- devo- there were so many servants of Lord Jagannath there and they can't touch me. Then they'll become contaminated. So Lord Chaitanya was very pleased and he spoke to Sanatana Goswami as follows. Told Sanatan that actually you can purify the whole world. By your touch, even great rishis and munis can become purified. Nevertheless, devotees, they're very strict in upholding Vaishnava etiquette. So if you don't follow this, people, they'll simply laugh and joke at you. What kind of a Vaishnava is that? And you can't get any benefit either in this life or the next. So Lord Chaitanya said that I'm very satisfied that you have observed this etiquette. Who but you could act like this? Then again, Lord Chaitanya embraced Sanatana. And again, all the, all the pus came out of his body and smeared over the body of Lord Chaitanya. Sanatana Goswami was trying to avoid Lord Chaitanya embracing him because of all these infected, infected sores. And actually, Sanatana became more and more upset when he saw that Lord Chaitanya would get all this oozing pus all over his body. Then um, what happened is Sanatan discussed with Jagarananda Pandit and taking Jagarananda's advice, he decided to go back to Vrindavan. Mm. So Jagarananda inv- advised him in this way uh, and Sanatan told that when he met Lord Chaitanya, but Lord Chaitanya wasn't very pleased. Yeah, he wasn't very happy about Jagarananda advising Sanatan. Uh, what happened is the next day, Haridas and, and Sanatan met Lord Chaitanya as usual. And as usual, um, Lord Chaitanya embraced Sanatan. And again, the past came out on Lord Chaitanya's body. Yeah. Then Sanatan Goswami revealed his mind again to Lord Chaitanya. Yeah. So Sanatan said, I came to Vrindavan for my benefit, but I'm getting just the opposite. I'm not fit to serve the Lord, and I'm simply making offenses each day. 
that by, by you touching me, I'm committing sinful activities because I'm making the Pascha all over your transcendental body. So please, let me leave here and go to Vrindavan. So Lord Chaitanya became upset at Jagaranan and said, who is he to give you advice? He's just a new boy. You are, you, as far as you are concerned, you are so elevated and exalted that even I take advice from you. Thus, Lord Chaitanya criticized Jagadananda, but Sanatana wasn't happy with that either. And, oh, you're criticizing Jagadananda because actually you love him so much, but you're giving me so much respect. That's just like drinking the bitter juice of the neem tree. Then Lord Chaitanya explained that it's not that I love you less, but there are different relationships in devotional service. Lord Chaitanya said, I'm not praising you simply as a matter of formality, but actually you are very much praiseworthy. And then uh, Lord Chaitanya explained that as a sannyasi, I can't get upset because your body is oozing passes. I have to be equal to everything. Lord Chaitanya told Haridas and Sanatana that I think of you too just like, like my little sons. I have to look after by bringing you prasad every day like this. So just like um, this nasty moisture oozes onto my body every day, the Lord Chaitanya said, I don't mind about that. Just as a mother takes great pleasure in looking after her children and even the child passes stool and urine right on her body, she doesn't mind that at all. Then, then Lord Chaitanya again embraced uh, Sanatana Goswami, who at this time saw that his body, all the sores went away and his body became beautiful, golden color. So Lord Chaitanya told Sanatana, you stay another year for me with me at Puri, then you go to Vrindavan. And Haridas Thakur, seeing the change in Sanatana Goswami's body, was greatly astonished. And, ex- and said to Lord Chaitanya, this is your, this is your amazing pastimes. And said that you caused Sanatana to get this rash, just so that you could test his steadfastness in devotional service. So after they saw the Dol Yatra festival, that, that's a, on the same date as the Gorbanima festival, then after that Lord Chaitanya started instructing Sanatana exactly what he wanted him to do in Vrindavan. And Dol Yatra. Yeah, though it's called Dol Yatra, it means the swinging Yatra, Radha and Krishna. Yeah, it's on the same day as Gopanim, that's why we don't celebrate it. So then Lord Chaitanya, he, he, uh, he sent Sanatan Goswami away from Puri to Vrindavan to do his work as he had instructed him. And you can imagine how attached Lord Chaitanya and Sanatan Goswami were to each other. Therefore, Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami doesn't even describe the that when they left each other. He simply said that it's it's too much to describe even properly. So it's it's so powerfully, transcendentally full of pathos. Even from before, Sanatan Goswami had decided to again go to the Jayakanda forest on the way back to, uh, to uh, Vrindavan. But this time, before he left, he noted the names of all the towns and villages where Lord Chaitanya had passed. Lord Chaitanya had gone through the Jarikan forest before. So, from his servant, Sanatana Goswami found out the names of all the villages he had gone through before. So, in this way, Sanatana Goswami was able to, on his way back to the Jarikan forest, he was able to visit all the places where Lord Chaitanya had been. After some time, Sanatana met Rupa Goswami, he also came to Vrindavan. And the chapter ends with a description of the verses of the, of the books written by uh, the different Goswamis, which I already described last night. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. There's more on Sanatan Goswami, but uh, this evening I'll speak some, some, some stories which are not in Chaitanya Chaitanya, stories from Bhakti Ratnaka. Ratnaka. How Lord Chaitanya, uh, sorry, how Sanatan Goswami found the deity of Madan Mohan and installed him and how Madan Mohan used to complain to him, you're not feeding me properly and all these things. So what time are you going for Harinam this evening? Uh, five o'clock. Okay, where do we go? In the city center? There's yeah, city center. Many people are there at that time? Uh, not yet, but it's a good time. You know? Okay. What time up until we shall go? Yeah. How long should we stay there? Uh, I don't know, it depends what we choose. If we, can, if we get there by car to the center, that's mm. the center, or we can go by walking. It, it will take us uh, half an hour to get to the center by walking. Mm. By, uh, doing I think it's better to go by car and go to where the people are. Uh-huh. 
because th- th- we did that the other day in um, uh, Vladimir. We took Hainan procession to the place where we we're going to the Rathiyatra, but it was one hour going, and most of the places there were no people. Mm-hmm. So it would have been better to do Kirtan more in the place where there's more people. Mm-hmm. Of course, if you go if you go all the time to the same place, it's something else, but you're not, so we might as well go there by car. Mm-hmm. And we'll stay there till what time? How long does that remain busy, that area? Busy. Mm-hmm. With many people, yeah. Mm-hmm. It means what, until 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, like that? Uh, no, it's a little bit late. Till 7, 7, that's enough. Till about 7. So we'll go from 5 to 7? 5 to 7, yes. And we can come back and have a short class here. Some of the congregational members will come also? No, I'm asking you, they... Oh, they're here also? Congregation members are here? Glory to the Sri Krishna Sankirtan, which cleanses the heart of all the dust accumulated for years and extinguishes the fire of conditional life of repeated birth and death. The Sankirtan movement is the prime benediction for humanity at large because it spreads the rays of the benediction moon. Do you know in Russian how it goes? Is the life of all transcendental knowledge. It increases the ocean of transcendental bliss. It enables us to fully taste the nectar for which we are always anxious. So it's very beautiful poetry, even in Sanskrit. And then how Prabhupada has translated is also very beautiful poetry. I hope it's gone into Russian in the same way also. also Not poetry, but very poetic language. Mm-hmm. This is an uh, unusual style of English. Some so-called scholars have complained. They don't like this beautiful language of Prabhupada's. We like it. Let the scholars and rascals complain. Krishna likes it. Krishna inspired Prabhupada to speak like this. All right, so we'll finish there. And we'll meet again this evening. We'll go for a dance. Hare Krishna dance. It's not the same as disco dance. By disco dance, you go to hell. And by Hare Krishna dance, you go to Krishna. Hari Hari, all glories to Shri Prabhupada. Jai. After instructing Sanatana Goswami at Varanasi, Lord Chaitanya uh, prepared to leave for Puri. He told Sanatana to go to Vrindavan, telling him that his two brothers Rupa and After which so many other temples gradually came to be established. It's a small water pot, so when you go there, you look after them. It's how much responsibility Lord Chaitanya gave to Sanatana Goswami. Lord Chaitanya himself is Bhakta Vatsal, kind to his devotees, but he put Sanatana Goswami in charge of all of them to look after his devotees. Fortunate. And he was given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu the service to look after all his devotees in Vrindavan. So devotees, even today living in Vrindavan, can feel themselves to, to be under the shelter of Sanatana Goswami. They can't even solve their own problems, not to speak of other people. Srila yeah. Prabhupada, who is the greatest Acharya, who was empowered by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, to do even greater work than Lord Chaitanya personally did, he came and gave us Bhagavad Gita as it is. But we are so intelligent that Bhagavad Gita isn't good enough for us. Krishna can't, Krishna is, he's not intelligent enough to solve all our problems. We have to go to some meat-eating karmi and get his opinion. Or even if he's a vegetarian karmi, he's useless. Because he's an illusion. So how can he help us? So anyway, whatever the opinion is, we're not very much impressed by different opinions. Why don't you translate that? Whatever the different opinions may be, we're not interested in all these different opinions. The only problem is that we're not surrendered to Krishna. What's the problem? You chanted and you danced and you took prasad for so many years. And is it is it different now than five years ago? Now the prasad has worms in it? Or what's the problem? Now the chanting Hare Krishna doesn't work anymore? The holy name doesn't have potency anymore? The only problem is that we are rascals. That's all. We don't have faith in Krishna. If we just go on chanting Hare Krishna throughout our whole life, 
And all our problems will be finished. What's the real problem? The real problem is that we forgot Krishna. The real problem is that we're getting born and born and dying again and again. So we're thinking, well, there's some problem. Temple's too crowded. There's too much salt in the prasadam. So many severe problems. So <laughs> let me solve my problems. I'll go away from the temple and chant Hare Krishna outside. Very good idea. Maya got you. One time in Calcutta, I, I don't know how to describe the Calcutta temple. Has anyone been to Calcutta temple? Okay, so it's kind of crowded and not much facility, right? Well, I can tell you it's about 50 times better than it used to be. It's much better than it used to be. It's, it's a difficult place to stay now, but it's much better than it used to be. Now they've constructed, now they've constructed more rooms in the, there's a high ceiling, they constructed rooms in the roof, so there's more space. Previously there was only one toilet and one tap for all the devotees. Yeah, but anyway, most of the time there wasn't any water in the tap. You used to have to go to the lake on the other side of the road to take that. I remember one morning, one of, going in the dark, one of our devotees was bitten by a snake. And most of the time there was no electricity, which means you had to have candles at night. And in the day when it's extremely hot, and even in the night in the summer it's extremely hot, no fans. Anyway, I don't want to go on and on. I don't want to go on and on, but it was a difficult place to stay. And um, two devotees had just joined newly, the American devotees. At that time in India, it was mostly all Western devotees, not hardly any Indian devotees. Mm -hmm. They were husband and wife, Yadubha and Vishaka. Maybe you know their names. They made so many films about Krishna consciousness. You don't know. These are, these are famous names in our movement. So uh, the problems were more because the devotees, they were having a hard... They weren't relating together very nicely and there was some bickering between the devotees. You know, like not such nice feeling. So Yadubha and Vishaka were just new and they were finding it extremely difficult. But they, they wanted to leave, but the devotees said, just wait, Prabhupada's coming, Prabhupada's coming, speak with him first. So eventually Prabhupada came, and immediately when Prabhupada came, the whole consciousness of the temple just went, boom. So many times devotees used to come to Prabhupada, they had so many problems they wanted to tell Prabhupada, and then they just come and being in his presence, without even saying anything, they could understand, actually there's no problem. Only the problem is in my mind, that's all. So anyway, Yadubha and Vishaka went and they explained that, you know, we're just new and it's very difficult for us to stay in. We want to go on practicing Krishna consciousness, but we find this situation very difficult. So we would like to rent an apartment outside so that we can live peacefully with some facility and we'll come to the temple and we'll perform our devotion. Prabhupada said, yes, if you want, you can do that. Prabhupada said, but despite all the problems, still it's better to live in the temple. Prabhupada himself used to live in the temple. Sometimes the devotees would rent first-class hotel apartment for Prabhupada. Prabhupada would say, why? I want to live in the temple. He would say, well, Prabhupada, there's not proper facility. Here we can serve you less. Prabhupada said, no, I want to live in the temple. Don't be distracted by Maya. If you just stay in this movement, chant Hare Krishna, go on serving Krishna throughout your life, what do you think the result will be? Hmm? Stand a very good chance of going back to Godhead, right? If you give your whole life to Krishna, do you think that Krishna is going to just forget you at the time of death? But if you get entangled in so many other things, how are you going to get love of Krishna? So even if you live very comfortably, which anyway isn't possible in this material world, don't think that I will go outside and I won't have any problems. This material world means there must be problem. And especially if someone's practicing devotee and they try to avoid Krishna, then Krishna will send you many, many problems. Don't think you can avoid problems. Better to have the problems of too much crowding and devotees sometimes getting on your case and this and that can have the problem of being involved in material life. If you get involved in material, acti material activities, then your chances of remembering Krishna at the time of death, they become so much reduced. If you live to old age, which you may not because you may die tomorrow, but if you do, if you live to old age, you may die tomorrow, but if you live to old age, when you can no longer walk or talk properly, you can't go on Sankirtan, you can't dance in Kirtan, you can't clean the floor for Krishna. Are you going to look back and say, how I wasted my life? I didn't go on, I didn't go on Sankirtan, I didn't dance in Kirtan. I simply spent my whole life, I simply spent my whole life making some arrangements to be comfortable. So don't be overcome by your bad intelligence.
Just surrender to Krishna. That's all. Just, just do it one lifetime. How many millions of lifetimes have we spent trying to make some arrangement to be comfortable? Now in this one life, we are so fortunate to have the mercy of Guru and Krishna. We should be mad to get this mercy. What does it matter? Even if people beat you or whatever they do, how can we how can we give up our service to Guru and Krishna? We should do whatever is required to get Krishna. Even even if you have to suffer so many different things, if at the end you get Krishna, then you're the gainer. Actually, there's no suffering in devotional service. There's only ecstasy. See, when these difficulties things come, there are two ways of facing them. One is to make some compromise in your devotional service to try to overcome the difficulty. If you do that, you'll be miserable. The other way is to accept the difficulty as the mercy of Krishna and go on with the service and tolerate that difficulty. And anyone who does that becomes completely ecstatic in Krishna's service. So difficulties, devotees welcome. Here's the chance to surrender more. What is the meaning to surrender if when there's some difficulty comes then you give up? That's not surrender. Just like the soldiers, they are trained that you you have to go, whatever the difficulties you have to go on. Just in training they have to carry huge packs and go through the muddy fields running for miles. And the commander can tell them to do anything at any time. They're running in the fields, carrying the heavy pack. All of a sudden he says, there's an enemy attack. Fall on the ground in the cold mud. You have to do it. It's just training, but you have to do it. You just have to keep on going. And if you keep on going, where do you, if you keep on going in devotional service, where do you go? You go back to Godhead. Because that's where devotional service leads you to. But if you don't keep on going in devotional service, then you'll keep on going round and round the cycle of birth and death. Eight million four hundred thousand forms of trying to avoid difficulty. Any other question? All right, so we'll finish there, and tomorrow morning I guess we can discuss more about Sanatana Goswami. Tomorrow morning? Tomorrow morning. They like, they like to hear some more. We can continue some more things. See, what is the difficulty? There's no difficulties.